Welcome to a video from justlifestyle.com. In this video, I'm going to look at music production with the Surface Pro 11 with the Snapdragon processor. So it's got the Elite X processor, so it's an ARM-based processor. Microsoft done a lot of work recently to get uh, music production and media production applications to the ARM platform. And Cubase 14, or Cubase, uh, I think, 13 and 14, are available for ARM. So I've installed Cubase on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it to see what we can and can't do with it because it's a different architecture. You can't just use the Windows uh, standard Intel drivers on here. So I've got a lot of devices that I could connect up to here and I'm going to see which work and which don't. The example, of what I'm using here is I've got the, here's the, the Surface Pro. I've got a USB hub plugged in and I plugged in Korg Key Stage uh, MIDI controller. I'm going to try some other devices as well and we'll see what works and what doesn't work. So first of all with uh, with Cubase for example you've got to get the ARM version so you can use their downloader if you've got an account uh, you, maybe you can get a demo account I'm not sure I already have an account so use their downloader tool and make sure you get the ARM version so you can see on here it's got the um, Windows and ARM support, so you make sure you've got that one ticked, and then you'll get the relevant versions for you, so you can download which version you've got. The one thing I found, I downloaded the the Cubase 14, um, and it installed fine, and then when I came to use it, there was no audio drivers. Then I rang the downloader again, and it came up with the ASIO uh, drivers from by Steinberg for ARM. So I installed that, and then everything worked. So let me show you what I mean on that. So, if I open Cubase, you can see in the studio setup here, audio drivers. I've actually just got the one, the Steinberg built-in uh, as the audio driver. And Microsoft said that there's going to be inbox audio drivers coming later this year, so you won't have to get them, there'll be an inbox ones already. You can see the latency we've got there, then 2040. But there is a bit of noticeable latency, it's more noticeable than probably if I'm using one of my other devices. Um, if there was a ARM-based driver for the key stage, the audio driver, then that would probably have lower latency because it's not using the generic one there isn't for my example here so um, if you've got a mix of USB on it and maybe it's got an ARM based drive already then and there are some of the new ones um, out there that have got the, the drivers already there so if they're already there then go with those because they're going to work much better than the, the default one so the driver situation is going to get better as new um, devices come out and, and the support and then there'll be the Microsoft built-in one as well in terms of controllers, this uh, key stage didn't need any driver either. So it's got an audio interface built into this key stage as well as, the, as a, being a MIDI controller. So I just plugged that in, as you can see, and straight away that's the audio device that was working on here, and so it's what I'll be using, and the MIDI device as well. Most MIDI devices nowadays work out of the box without special drivers. Um, I've got a lot of Korg devices, and they work as MIDI fine if you need special drivers then Korg don't have them so just something to bear in mind um, the, the out of the box the generic drivers work fine so before I get into testing some devices I'm just going to open up a project first I want to talk about the form factor as well it is a, a nice portable compact um, system really I'm using it here obviously with the keyboard I don't have to have the keyboard on and of course with the flex keyboard I can still use the keyboard uh, even though it's not directly connected so you know I can place that wherever wherever suits me which is which is quite good the other option as well is of course I've got touch um, and pen so um, if I go to the mix console I, I've got control over the the levels you know, with with the finger or I could do pen editing and so on so that's that's quite nice obviously it's got two there's two USB-C ports on here as well, so you that's your limit. But I've got hub, and I think I've got an, I've got a few of these hubs 
so I could have you know four USB on there if I'm connecting up more gear. So if I want to, if I want to connect up more gear, I've got another one. You know, I've got a few of these. USB C gives me. Um, this will give you three and Ethernet as well, so I can plug that in. Of course, you can use a Surface Dock as well. So there's plenty of connectivity options, but it does mean you're going to have to have these extra things, unless, of course, your audio interface or your SIM that goes directly via USB-C. I don't think that many that would do. Right, so let's have a look at using it now. Um, here I've got a track play. And that's using that built-in audio driver and software synths. So all that was routed out through the key stage, which is using it as as, um, as the audio interface. And these are using some of the Steinberg. Uh, so these are using some of the, uh, the virtual instruments. So I've got the Halion and the Retrolog. And also using it as well, one, which is a third party one, which is the, um, the Profit 10 from Cherry Audio, which works fine. So I can control that straight through the, straight through MIDI and that works really well. So this wasn't a special version of it. Um, I just went to my account with Cherry Audio and, uh, and downloaded that. So it worked out of the box. It's uh, VST and worked straight away. One thing that doesn't work, or I've not been able to get work, are any of the newer Korg devices, which I've got a few of these. So if you use the native version of the Korg um, plugins, ModWave native, WaveState native, MultiPoly native, they don't work. The installer just says your, your platform isn't supported. I, I reached out to Korg and they said um, it's not currently on their development plans. So um, if you're using those or as essential, then that they are not going to work. I did try some other examples from Korg Collection and I've got the uh, WaveState working, uh, no problem, that installed fine. I couldn't then register it. I got the some. I, I did install the Code Collection Five and this Code Software Pass, and so the ones I tested from Code Collection Five actually work. The Wave State is installed, and I can get that on here. The only issue I had with it is that um, I couldn't get it to then register, um, even though I've, I've purchased it. It doesn't work with the um, Code Software Pass to do. And they're not sort of talking to each other, so I couldn't actually get it to 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 work that way. So it works in demo mode, um, but there is an offline activation. So maybe I could try the active opt activation, the offline activation, and but you see it works fine. So if I do maybe the offline activation will, will help, and that and that will sort that out. So it does look like some of the Korg applications work. Uh, but not the the recent ones. Same with the editors as well. I didn't get the editors to work either. Uh, so wave state editor. So that is going to be an issue until software companies like Korg recognise that um is a platform that they they need support. It's going to take a while to get everything on there. But like I said, the built-in ones have worked fine. And in terms of performance. I've not really had any issues with, with performance. I've got, what, eight tracks currently playing there, and um, they, they seem fine. So the latency is a bit, a bit high with that built-in sort of audio device. But uh, yeah, it, it's working, and it's a really nice compact form factor. So for the th everything, for the things that you can install, seem to work fine. I said the Cherry Auto ones, no, no, no issues with those at all. The built-in ones, fine. Apart from the latency, which is a bit higher because of this generic driver, um, everything is works really well. So it's a nice compact form factor as well. Yes, you have to use your dongles and things like that, but yeah, it's it's a very flexible solution, and you can really, you know, I can place that anywhere, you know, in my environment and use it like you 
you would use a, any, any tablet or sort of an iPad type thing, but it's running the full version of Windows. So I've got my audio tools, but I've also got my video editing tools on here that I use to, to edit this video. So they're already on there and you know, they're working fine. I've even got something called Windows Recall, which is probably something I should do a separate video on. Uh, but it does allow you to sort of go back in time and have a look at what you were working on at the time. Let me just authenticate that. So you can see here what I'm working on and I can sort of go back in time. You can't go back and restore from that point or anything else like that but it does allow you to look so I, if i wondered you know what virtual instrument was i using which patch i used and because i closed it off i can i can then go back through and you can go all the way back through your timeline as well so it's actually quite a powerful feature definitely warrants a, a video in its own right and there is people with security privacy concerns but you do have to authenticate through windows hello when using that but it is quite interesting and of course you can grab images and text directly from these as well so i can grab that text there uh, showing you the drive and i can copy that to the clipboard and so on so it is quite useful for that and you may be looking back at maybe you're working on the track and you can't remember exactly how you got to that point this that is a tool that's available to you you don't have to turn it on you can turn it off if you want so my initial repression is if the thing that you want to use is supported like cubase or, and the generic drivers that for this audio interface and MIDI interface or Cherry Audio's uh, application, great. If you want to use or you're depending on using something that's not supported, like the Wave State Editor, then you're out of luck. There isn't really a, a way to, to fix that, or not that I found anyway. There is Intel emulation, but the installers don't actually allow you to get past that. So, for example, Cubase. Um, Camtasia Studio is was just the, the standard one I downloaded one there. So I presume it's the Intel version and it's running the emulation and it works fine. But like I said, the editor, it would probably work on the emulation, but it's blocked by the installer. So what I'm going to do now is I've got a couple of bits of kit that I'm going to try and connect up and let's see what works and what doesn't work. So I've put that in and it's working fine it's the um it's playing out through my headphones on here which are plugged into the, the headphones plugged into the mixer and that's and that's working fine so um no special driver needed it's got an ASIO driver that i would normally use on intel i use that built-in one and that's worked fine so i mean i can use my normal mixer on there which is which is really good so the other thing to try now is a couple of USB MIDI type devices, I think. So here I've got a USB, one of those cable type USB MIDI interfaces. And that's actually plugged into this Korg DW8000, so it's a digital life one, so it's got a MIDI in and out. So I'm going to connect that up to uh, the interface there into USB and then fire up Cubase and see how that does. So there we go. I've got a USB interface there now. So that should control that the wave state. Yeah, which I can hear it is. And on the reverse, I could then send that back to the DW8000. So that's basic MIDI working. Um, the usual, you know, MIDI control and tempo and everything else. So that's good. That's going to work fine. I could go into my... my studio into the settings and you can see i can use it as midi clock and everything that you would you would need to do so that's working fine so maybe we should try the um one of the cog since which i can't install the editor for but see if it works set the midi now to the wave state and that's playing that uh, absolutely fine it's going through my mixer and these headphones so it's like you can't hear it well that's working fine so Despite not having the drivers or editor or anything like that, I can use it. But I said you can't use the editor for sound design. That's a bit of a limitation, but it is working. I just did a quick test with a Behringer um, RD78, CR78 clone, and that's connected fine. So 
I think it's got the moral is that most things work, the MIDI things seem to work fine. Audio drivers, you can use the ASIO drivers. Special software like editors is, could be where you get the problem. Some things like Cherry Audio have worked fine. Uh, WaveStation worked fine as well. Newer things like the edit, editor librarians or the native versions of the code synth, these modern code synth don't work. So you, your mileage work may vary. So it, it is at that stage where you're gonna have to sort of test what will work and what will work for you. But overall, I like the form factor. It's really flexible, great for working on the move. Uh, you could take a, a little MIDI controller cap, uh, keyboard, plug it in via USB, and you've got a really nice portable setup there, especially if you've got one with the audio interface. Although you can use the built-in audio interface, and you can just play something through here, I think. Yeah, so like, that's using the speakers. Works fine. So you have got a nice portable rig setup. What works for you, what doesn't, is very much dependent on what you need. But it's early days for, for um, the, the um, built-in Windows drivers are coming soon, so um, that will give more more flexibility. MIDI 2.0 is going to give more MIDI options as well when that comes out later this year. And other providers, not just Steinberg, but other manufacturers are working on music software as well. So I'll include some resources so you can you can have a look at the um, the links that Microsoft um, included or announced at, at last year at the, at the Snapdragon uh, conference. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you've got any questions about running these kind of uh, music solutions on uh, the Surface and ARM-based devices, please let me know. I can do a follow-up video. I'll leave a question in the comments and I'll answer in the comments. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.